What's up guys, JC here. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Right now I'm back home in Chinos, California. On March 14th, right after spring break, everyone at the Naval Academy got to go home ever since we've just been doing online schooling. Um, so in the meantime, today I'm gonna show you guys how to get into the United States Service Academy. Alright, so a couple months ago, I made my first vlog video, a day in the life at the United States Naval Academy. I was not that proud of it, but I got a ton of subscribers and a ton of views from you guys from it. And looking into the comments, I got a lot of comments from high school students asking, how do I get into the Naval Academy? What can I do to pr improve my resume? So today we're going to talk about how to get into the Naval Academy, some helpful hints that might help you along with the admissions process and then what you could be doing at each step of high school in order to get to your final goal of getting in. So let's get started. All right, there's five service academies in the United States. West Point, Naval Academy, Air Force, Merchant Marine, and Coast Guard Academy. For all you guys that don't know me, my name is JC. I'm currently a sophomore at the United States Naval Academy. I'm majoring in robotics and control engineering. And I applied for all five schools when I was in high school. Element number one is academics. Academics is pretty clear cut. Just try and get as high of a GPA or SAT or ACT score as you can. All the academies accept both the SAT and the ACT score. So whichever tests that you score higher on, I recommend going in with that one. The academies do a unique thing with SAT scores called super scoring. What that means is you could grab your best math score and your best English score from two different tests and combine them to make your best SAT composite score and send that in as your official test score. All right, element number two is athletics. The academies aren't just looking for extremely smart students. They're also looking for well-balanced athletes in high school as well. If you guys are already a part of sport, try aiming for that varsity position. And if you're already on varsity, try aiming for that captain position. If you guys aren't a part of any sports, that's totally fine. Performing arts is also very well taken into the academies. Element number three is extracurricular activities or any activities that you do outside of school. This can include clubs, charity events, volunteer events, uh, tutoring, things like that. Those are very well liked by the Naval Academy because they like to see people serving their communities. Element number four is the congressional nomination. All four academies with the exception of the Coast Guard Academy requires applicants to get a congressional nomination in order to get accepted to their school. There's four sources where you could get your congressional nomination. You get one from your congressperson in your district, you get one from your senator, and everyone can apply for the vice presidential nomination. For those of you that have parents that are reserves or active military, you guys can also look into the presidential nomination, which is only reserved for you guys. Element number five is the candidate fitness assessment or the CFA. The CFA consists of the shuttle run, push-ups, sit-ups, one mile run, pull-ups, and the basketball throw. Element number six is recommendation letters. The academies are most likely going to ask you for recommendation letters from English, math, and science teachers, along with a recommendation from your athletics director. So keeping this in mind, you guys want to start looking out for teachers that give you a good recommendation letter and can attest to your competency and your character. Step number seven is summer programs. All the academies with the exception of the Merchant Marine Academy have summer programs that you could apply and attend the summer after your junior year. I got to go to the West Point Summer Leaders Experience as well as the Naval Academy Summer Seminar and both squads that I was in at both service academies had a crazy amount of people that ended up going to the academies. I think it was like 60% of my squad that I got to go. Alright, so that was in a package how to get into a service academy. Let's talk about some helpful tips. Helpful hit number one, try to get the application done as early as possible. The first letter of assurances get sent out around early August. They're only sent to the top priority students that feel like they're the most qualified in their class. With that being said, get your letters of recommendations in early. Try to reach out to your teachers by the end of junior year so that they can have the recommendation letters done by the beginning of August. This applications process is very long, hard, and strenuous. 
you're going to be tempted to kind of go to your parents, ask for help, or try to look for videos like this, which is totally fine. But there's a reason for why it's long and strenuous. Try and do it on your own, and it's going to teach you the important skills of being independent and knowing how to do things on your own. Tip number three is get in touch with your teachers and counselors early. Because you have to get your letters of recommendation in early, you should also be trying to look out for teachers that have good opinions on you and know your character. You have to take into account that if you ask them for recommendation letter, they're probably gonna take a few weeks for them to complete it because they have a bunch of other things that they have to do. Helpful tip number four is build a resume. All your awards, your academic achievements, your athletic awards, all those things you wanna keep track of and put together into a nice written resume so that all you have to do when applications come around is just plug them into the computer. Even times where I just sent the college my total resume and didn't have to write anything down for it. The resume is also gonna help you Keep track of the stuff that you need to write down for other colleges, not just the service academies. Helpful tip number five is apply for ROTC. Now this is kind of an optional tip, but it's gonna come a long way if you get accepted. ROTC stands for the Reserved Officers Training Corps. It's essentially a program that's very much like the academies where they're gonna pay for most of your tuition and most of your housing, but you have to pay them back by serving five years of service after you graduate. Helpful tip number six is get in touch with your high school and academy counselors as soon as possible. Your high school counselors are going to help you along the process, and if they don't already know the process, they're going to research more into it and help you out. But definitely take advantage of your academy counselors. Some counselors are going to differ by each academy. For me personally, my Naval Academy Blue and Gold counselor was not as helpful as I wanted it to be, but my West Point counselor was very helpful. Your academy counselors are going to have special access to your profile and how you look on your application, so just approach them with any opinions that you have about it. Helpful tip number seven is practice your interviews. Be sure to go in front of a mirror and practice your lines at least once or twice. I'll give you a clue right now. Most boards are just going to ask you straight off, why do you want to attend the academies? And most people are going to tell them just because they want to serve. But you're going to want to come up with a better, more creative answer than that. They all know that you want to serve because you wouldn't be at the interview in the first place. So try and make it personal and make it more intimate with them. <music> Now let's move on to the step-by-step -step process of what you have to do in your high school career in order to get to being admitted. All right, freshman year, you really don't have to worry about that much. Just focus on getting your grades up, try and maintaining that 4.0 GPA. And yeah, you might wanna look into some clubs that you might wanna join so that you could stay committed throughout the rest of your high school career. Start looking at some SAT or ACT practice pages and try testing yourself on doing some of them and getting yourself acclimated early. Sophomore year is when you really want to start grinding. Start taking more AP classes and start taking some SAT prep if you need it. I took my first PSAT in my sophomore year and I think it helped a lot in junior year to take the actual SAT. Start looking to get really involved in clubs. Try and serve a lot in your community by volunteering a lot in different campaigns. And this is also when you want to start aiming for that varsity position on a sport. You don't really have to do anything during sophomore year in terms of admissions other than just proving your resume. Junior year is probably going to be your most stressful year in your whole high school career. It should be the year where you're taking the most strenuous AP classes and looking for critical pieces that will be important to your application. Junior year is when you're going to want to start applying for summer programs. Junior year is going to be the year when you should start looking into becoming an officer for some of the clubs that you're involved in. Being an officer of the club is going to show your leadership potential and how you can lead a group of people. Junior year is also when you're going to want to approach some teachers and ask them for a recommendation letter. Just a reminder to ask them early so that they could get done by the end of summer. Reach out to your congressman and ask them for the application for the congressional nomination. Also apply for the senator nominations as well as the vice presidential nomination, which is found online. Like I said in the beginning of the video, junior year is also when you start applying for your summer programs. Start looking onto the website of the service academies and apply for their summer programs. There's three really big advantages to going to an academy summer program. One is just you get to see how life is like a cadet or a midshipman. You're going to be walking, eating, marching, and working out just as a cadet or a midshipman would do in his daily life. Advantage number two is probably the biggest advantage. You're going to be taking an official candidate fitness assessment at the academy. If you don't end up taking it at the academy or you get a poor score, you're going to have to take it back at home and videotape some of the exercises like pull-ups and push-ups. Big advantage number three is it just looks good on your resume. All right, and for senior year, if you followed all my steps up till now, you should be done with your application even before your senior year starts. I recommend you have your application done by around early August, but it's totally fine if you wait until December or early January. I submitted my application around October, 
and I was not able to get a lot of assurance, but they only issue around 30 per year. And because you got your academy applications done early and out of the way, you can start focusing on the other college applications that you need to focus on. That was it for how to get into the academy. I really hope you guys do well. If you guys have any questions, you guys could DM me on Instagram. If you guys haven't noticed, I've been trying to reply to as many comments as possible. And I also make sure to reply on the DMs that you guys send me. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys later in the future.